When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day, someone waits for me. This is Bob Murphy welcoming you to Philco Radio Time, produced and transcribed in Chicago with John Scott Trotter and his orchestra and Bing's guests, Dorothy Shea, the Park Avenue hillbilly, and Groucho Marx, the raucous revenuer. Tonight, <laughs> tonight we're at the United States Veterans Administration Hospital at Hines, Illinois. And now here he is, Bing Crosby himself. Hi, fellas. First off, I want to thank Bob Murphy of the Breakfast Club for pinch hitting for Ken Carpenter tonight. How do you like doing a dinner show, Bob? Well, just fine, Bing. But, uh, look, why didn't you bring Ken Carpenter from Hollywood with you? Well, you see, Bob, uh, Ken comes from Peoria. I was afraid if I brought him back to Illinois, the sheriff from Peoria might come up and claim him. <laughs> well, uh, look, uh, huh. wh why, Bing? What, has Ken done something wrong? Well, he's been announcing on the radio. You get ten years down there for that. <laughs> I think I'd better change the subject yeah. quick here, boy. Well, uh, how about asking you something about your trip east, Bing? Uh, anything eventful happen? Oh, yes. At Albuquerque, a couple of Indians named Sid Silvers and Fred Finkelhoff boarded the train, and they nailed me. <laughs> uh, you sure bought a nice blanket from them, too, Bing. <laughs> I knew it was very good. <laughs> they didn't sell me this blanket, Bob. They had a brand new song. It's about a ball player who went to Albuquerque. Think the lads here might like it. Will you pitch me a downbeat, uh, John Scott? Something underhanded, huh? His name was Lefty, the South Paw from Brooklyn, training in the Golden West. She was the belle of Albuquerque. Pull up a chair if you care to hear the rest. He was with the Dodgers out in Albuquerque when he saw Maria smile and nod her head. Cause his time was getting short, he started talking turkey. But she couldn't comprehend the word he said With her lingo he was having lots of trouble So he made a pass like any southpaw would And so right away their two hearts hit a double It was love, a language they both understood Later on he bought a Spanish dictionary And he turned to Paige, I love you and instead of sighing how you hit me, Mary, he kissed her and said, You're almost dead. Now Maria sits and waits in Albuquerque. She's still catching flies, although they're far apart. He's a cinch to pitch next year for Albuquerque, cause he left her with a promise in his heart. I, 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 I. All his Brooklyn fans are wailing Cause his pitching has been failing And the bottles they are flailing And the Dodgers they are trailing I, 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 I. He's pathetic now to watch her Got so Spanish and so hot you. Calls each lady fan machacha And the umpires cucaracha I, 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 I. And their fine Brooklyn fellow Changed his name to Manuelo I, I, they cry We can kiss the flag goodbye Though his pitching's getting wild and oh so jerky Manuela doesn't raise and throw his glove He knows he'll be in form in Albuquerque Cause Maria will be there to catch his glove Bing, say, the way you sang that song, it's just as terrific as your blanket. Well, there. thanks, Robert, but you sound ominously like Ken Carpenter. Knocking yourself out over a tune here, the minute it's commercial time. Uh, well, uh, I know, Bing, but, you know, I gotta kind of wind up tonight. It's a new pitch here on your show. Well, never fear, Ace. Maybe you can get our radio commercials out of a rut, huh? Well, look, Ben, the, uh, the trouble is, I only talk about Philco refrigerators on the breakfast club. Well, why don't we sell the 1201 with a, with a freezer locker tonight? Mm-hmm. Hmm? 
slide a record in, take out a roast of beef. Well, now you're talking. And think how much handier the portable would be with this summer for with an easy-out ice tray well, built uh, in, you know. <laughs> when I look big... Hot and you... cold folding doors and a built-in <laughs> tea wagon. We don't have everything here. Look big if you think Philco would really go Well, how could they thing? help us? The research department has been gold-bricking on us, Bob. Let's feed them some new ideas. Well, probably you listeners have seen plenty of table model radio phonographs, right? Right. One listener heard from. <laughs> okay. But you haven't heard anything till you take a listen to Philco's new table model with the automatic record changer. It's loaded with power, terrific on performance, and Philco's new changer handles up to 12 records, slick and quick. Just go hear it. That's all we ask you. Oh, and P.S. When you buy your new refrigerator, ask for the refrigerator with all the features. Hmm? That's uh, Philco, too. That's the one for me. <laughs> I recorded this song some years ago, but apparently even that didn't stop it from being revived again this year. Just can't kill a good song. Is it a sin? Is it a crime? Loving you, dear, as I do. If it's a crime, then I'm guilty, guilty of loving you. Maybe I'm wrong, dreaming of you, dreaming a lonely night through. If it's a crime, then I'm guilty. Guilty of loving you. What can I do? What can I say? After I've taken the blame. You say you're through. You go your way. But I'll always feel just the same. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, loving you, dear, like I do. If it's a crime, then I'm guilty, guilty of loving you. What can I do? What can I say after I've taken the blame? You say you're through, you go your way, but I'll always feel just the same. It's a crime, then I'm guilty, guilty of loving That was guilty, sung by Bing Crosby. I think he should demand a new trial, don't you, fellas? <laughs> I could swear I just heard Groucho Marx's voice. Most people do when they hear it. Take a bow, Groucho. No instructions, please. I'm an old ham at this game. Bow. <laughs> Groucho, I must say, you built yourself up quite an interest. Get <laughs> okay, get him out of it. You certainly know how to milk an audience. I should know how to milk. When I was a baby, my nurse was Elsie, the cow. <laughs> a cow for a nursemaid? Did your folks want to be, want you to be a farmer? Or... Yeah, some parents want their children to be musicians, so they get them a piano. But me? I had a cow to practice on. 
Uh, I was very clever, though, Bing. I learned to milk Elsie before I could talk. Well, you must have had a lot of pull. Huh? Well, I certainly had my hands full. <laughs> I learned a lot from that cow, Bing. What? Not cow, Bing. Is that your name, cow? <laughs> You know, you know, I can still brush away flies with my tail. Uh-huh. And that's not easy. <laughs> well, it'd be a cinch if you had a tail. <clears throat> Anyhow, Grouchy, before we go completely daffy here, allow me to extend a warm, firm hand of welcome to Philco Radio Time. Please do, but make sure that warm, firm hand contains a large, firm check. <laughs> you want a firm check? Yes, the Philco firm, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, tell me you're broke. Of course I won't tell you. I'm no blabbermouth. <laughs> a few years ago, I had enough money to choke a horse. What happened? I made a mistake. I bet on the horse instead of choking him. <laughs> well, since you took a bath at the Downs, Groucho, I'll scratch out a check for you. Look, I'll do my own scratching. Just use a pen, huh? <laughs> so what's your real name, Groucho? My real name is Dame May Whitty, but you can't notice it until I start walking. <laughs> Okay, Grouch, here's your loot. By the way, what are you doing in Chicago, anyhow? What's happening? Well, I, I came here to settle my uncle's affairs. He left me his entire collection of over 400 clocks. And you're winding up the estate. <laughs> that was my line at rehearsal. <laughs> but I love Chicago. As a matter of fact, my grandfather's grandfather came here many years ago with a wagon load of coleslaw. Why coleslaw? Well, it took a lot of cabbage to live in Chicago those days. <laughs> Anyhow, Bing, right after the program, I'm going to take you on a guided tour throughout the city in my glass bottom bus. I'll show you Chicago from every angle. Yeah. You really know this town? Do I know this town? Yeah. Well, I can remember way back when they had a Republican mayor. Really? You do go back. Yes, I do. I may as soon as this is over. Now, Crosby, I have two tours. There's the $3 tour and the $5 tour. What's the difference between the $3 tour and the $5 tour? Well, on the 5 buck tour, we close the windows and we pass the stockyards. <laughs> for $2 extra, you should burn incense. Make it $3 extra and I'll burn the bus. <laughs> you will love this trip, though, Bing. Clever, huh? We hit all the points of interest? Oh, first I take you to the top of the Wrigley Building. Oh, how gay. I even show you the juicy fruit room. <laughs> From there, I point out such interesting shots as the Golden Gate Bridge. That's in San Francisco. You can't see the Golden Gate Bridge from the Wrigley Building. I didn't say you could see it. I just said I'd point it out. (laughs) As a matter of fact, you can hardly see Chicago from the Wrigley Building. (laughs) After that, I show you Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is in Buffalo. Niagara Falls is in what Buffalo? (laughs) Buffalo, New York. Oh, well, that's different. I thought you were trying to tell me that some buffalo had swallowed Niagara Falls. (laughs) Let's not argue about the falls. Come up to my room and take a shower. It's only water anyhow. Eh? Got you. I just throw it... your hair on the bed. Okay. Thing. I think this trip is a fraud. It's a swindle. A sightseeing tour of Chicago should include the Field Museum, the Shed Aquarium, Soldiers Field, the Planetarium, Lincoln Park. All right, wise guy. Here's five bucks. You show me around town. Huh? You even left out the art institute. Well, if it's pictures you want, I'll sing you a song about a girl who has plenty of pictures. I should love to hear about that. I usually have a big vocal group to assist me with this number, but I left them at the Pittsburgh ballpark selling frankfurters. <laughs> Bing, would you mind singing me a few la-la-las to help me out? I shall la-la-la until unconscious. Just well, pitch till you win, boy. You go a five minute when ready, Grace. Oh, yeah. oh, Lydia, oh, Lydia, say, have you met Lydia? Lydia, the tattoo lady. She has eyes that men adore so. And a torso, even more so. Lydia, oh, Lydia, that encyclopedia. Oh, Lydia, the queen of them all. On her back is the Battle of Waterloo. Beside it, the wreck of the Hesperus, too. And proudly above waves the red, white, and blue. You can learn a lot from Lydia. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. She can give you a view of the world in tattoo If you'll step up and tell her where For a dime you can see Kankakee or Paris Or Washington crossing the Delaware La la la, la 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 la, la 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 
are Lydia poor Lydia say have you met Lydia Lydia the tattooed lady when her muscles start relaxing up the hill comes Andrew Jackson Lydia oh Lydia that encyclopedia oh Lydia the champ of them all for to be she will do a massacre in jazz with a view of Niagara that nobody has and on a clear day you can see Alcatraz you can learn a lot from Lydia la 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 come along and see Buffalo Bill with his lasso just a little classic by Mendel Picasso here is Captain Spaulding exploring the Amazon. Here's Godiva, but with her pajamas on. La 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 Oh, Lydia, oh, Lydia, oh, have you met Lydia? Lydia, the tattooed lady. When she stands, the world grows little. When she sits, she sits on Hitler. Lydia, oh, Lydia. That encyclopedia, oh Lydia, the queen of them all. She once swept an admiral clear off his feet. The ships on her hips made his heart skip a beat. And now the old boy's in command of the fleet. For he went and married Lydia. I said Lydia. He said Lydia. I said Lydia. We said Lydia. La la. <laughs> Oh, that was jolly, Groucho. Really very, very fine. Uh, never mind me. Congratulations on your part. I wouldn't be surprised if that would bring on a big wave of la-la-la-la-ling. Nice little part I had, la-la-la. Yes. A leopard gets better spots mm -hmm. than that. <laughs> now, if you'll stand by, Groucho, I should like to present a very talented young lady. This girl is a dish. She doesn't have that talent. You're so right. But many of you in our radio audience have enjoyed this gal's records on Columbia and Columbia album or had the privilege of seeing her at the St. Regis in New York. The Empire Room in the Palmer House are currently at the Mark Hopkins in San Francisco. What is this girl, a traveling bellboy? <laughs> oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Park Avenue Hillbilly, Miss Dorothy Shea. Gosh, thanks, Bing. Well, it's certainly nice to see you, Dorothy. Gee, Bing, ever since I've been in show business, I've wanted to be on your program. Now that I'm on it, I'm so scared I can hardly hold still. Well, just grab a hold of me, Dorothy. We'll do a little rumba. No use wasting all that motion. <laughs> Listen, Crosby, you going to introduce me to this girl, or do I have to go outside and run over myself with my bus? <laughs> pardon me, Groucho, pardon me. Dorothy Shea, may I present Groucho Marx? I'm mighty thrilled to meet you, Miss Marx. Well, I should think you would be. <laughs> I seem to be making progress. There will be a slight pause while I get rid of Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> Dorothy, I'm running a special moonlight tour for two. Uh, shall we go? Gee, I couldn't think of going without my mother. I'm glad you mentioned her. We need someone to drive the bus. <laughs> what about me? You can take tickets. <laughs> Shucks, Mr. Marks, I can't tell whether you're serious or just full of corn pone. <laughs> well, shucks, Dorothy, I must be serious. I never ate any corn pone in my life. <laughs> And by the way, aren't we a little too far north for all this southern fry dialogue? Well, you see, Groucho, uh, Dorothy hails from Florida. You mean she came by storm? <laughs> That's ridiculous, hail from Florida, indeed. Why, well, I've seen hailstones as big as oranges in Florida. If Florida's so smart, why doesn't it have oranges as big as oranges? <laughs> Can you squeeze a hailstone and get orange juice? <laughs> Dorothy Wild Groucho figures this thing out. How about a song, huh? Okay, Bing. Do you think the boys would like feud and fighting and fussing? Oh, I think it ought to have the place in sections. Just stand right in. Beyond the busy highway, beyond the city strife, we highly treasure and take great pleasure in our plane, no way home, Pilate. Feuding, a fussing, and a fighting. Sometimes it gets to be exciting. Don't like them on the 
hungry neighbors down by the creek We'll be plumb out of neighbors next week Grandma, poor old grandma Why'd they have to shoot poor grandma? She lies neath the clover Someone caught her being then over Picking up a daisy few A fussing and a fighting This is a wrong that needs a writing Let's get that funeral service over So then we'll go feud and fighting again Feuding, fighting and a fussing That's all that's going on with us and We are such neighborly people Peaceful and sweet All except when we have them to meet Daughter, baby daughter Poisoned all the neighbor's chickens Daughter, shouldn't daughter Least though she could run like the dickens They hit her with a shovel feud A fighting man, a fussing no use of standing here a-cussing Polish the shooting iron more I'm getting again To go feuding, a-fussing a feuding man a-fussing again <laughs> Great, Dorothy. Really, really sharp. But I've heard you sing that song many times before, and tonight it seemed a little short. Did you leave out some of it? Skip some? Well, yes, I did. You see, I being... Thought so. <laughs> well, this is my first appearance on your show, and I didn't want to take up too much time. Take all the time you want, Dorothy. After all, we don't want your pappy down here with a squirrel rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I should say not. Come on, Dorothy. Finish up your tune. Well, I'm kind of bashful, so I thought maybe... Uh, you and Mr. Marks might help me out. Well, okay, Groucho. Sure. You want to help a lady in distress? Sure will. A fighting, a feuding, and a fussing. That's all that's going on with us. And we are such neighborly people, peaceful and sweet. All except when we happen to meet. <laughs> Daughter, baby daughter poisoned all the neighbor's chickens daughter <laughs> short and order least till she could run like the dickens they hit her with the shovel oh, you and a fighting and a fussing ain't no use to stand and hear a cussing Let's give our daughter a pistol now that she's fall And go feuding and fighting some more. A fussing, a fighting, and a feuding. Why did that sheriff keep intruding? He was a curious bitter young man. Well, it's a shame he was pushed down the well. Water, the well water. Don't water the the dog on stuff don't taste, taste like it order. Look here, says liquor. That's why we all drink corn liquor. It's a better with your shoes off. Feuding and a fussing and a fighting. Oh, just a day. This ain't no corner you can brighten. Polish the shoe nines more. We're getting the air. Feuding, a fighting. Feuding and a fighting. A feuding and a fighting. A feuding and a fighting. A feuding bring 
folks out of the hills ain't been to town for years. Never catch us, we got a head start on them. I don't know about the start, but we sure didn't have a finish. We sure did. <laughs> well, Ping, if anybody does catch up with you, sell them a new Philco radio. That sensational Philco portable, for instance, would stop them right in their tracks. More power, finer performance, all the latest electronic improvements from the Philco Laboratories. And every 1947 Philco is like that, brand new all the way through. Beautiful plastic table models, gorgeous console radio phonographs, the famous 1201. Each and every one of them is designed and built with all the resources of the world's largest radio manufacturer, Philco, the leader of the industry since 1930. Remember that when you buy your new radio. And for a thrilling new experience in radio listening, look at the leader first. Look at a Philco. Famous for quality the world over. Miss Peggy Lee turned this tune for us some weeks ago. Shows you how game I am. I'm, I'm going to try and follow her. How game can you be? When I do, I'll see you standing there. I'll lock my heart to any other caress. I'll never say yes to a new love affair, I'll close my eyes to everything that's gay, if you're not there to share each lovely day. about it for now. Fellas, I want to tell you it's been a real treat to get out here to VA at Heinz Hospital. That goes for me too, Bing. I'm glad that I could get out here too, boys. You going to hang around Chicago for a few days, Ralph? No, I think I'm going to leave. Chicago's too windy for me and vice versa. <laughs> Man, that old wind was blowing last night, wasn't it? It sure was. I went to sleep in the Ambassador Hotel last night and I woke up this morning in the Shaman House. <laughs> How was the floor show? <laughs> well, you should... I, you I should... don't know. I was on the ceiling, <laughs> shouldn't have opened your window, Groucho. I'd better go to bed in this town again. I wouldn't even sleep with my mouth open. <laughs> I might find my bridge bike at the Edgewater Beach. Who are your guests next week, Bing? Oh, next week we got Irving Berlin and Al Jolson. They're going to huddle around the mic with me. I must make a note of that. Don't bother. Just listen to Walter Winchell Sunday. He'll probably tell the world. Walter's well, our press agent. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, huh? <laughs> This program was produced and transcribed in Chicago by Bill Morrow and Murdo McKenzie. Tune in to Philco Radio Time next week and hear John Scott Potter, his chorus and orchestra, and Bing's guests, Irving Berlin and Al Jolson. Groucho Marx will soon be seen in the motion picture Copacabana. Mr. Marx appears to the courtesy of his agent, who by an odd coincidence happens to be his brother, Gummo Marx. <laughs> who by an odd coincidence has already spent his commission. <laughs> And remember, only Philco makes the 1201. It's the newest invention from Philco, the leader. <laughs> <laughs>